माई डियर स्टूडेंट्स असलम एंड वेलकम टू योर ऑनलाइन सेशंस बिफोर द ईद वैकेशंस वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द हारमोन्स ऑफ द एंटीरियर पिटुटरी ग्लैंड एंड इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द पोस्टेरियर पिटुटरी हारमोन्स द पोस्टर पिटुटरी ग्लैंड सीक्रेट्स टू हारमोन्स वन इज द एंटी डायोरेटिक हारमोन एंड अनादर वन इज द ऑक्सीटोसिन The posterior pituitary gland is also known as the neurohypophysis and it is composed of glial like cells called pituitaries. The pituitaries do not secrete the hormones. We know that the posterior pituitary hormones are synthesized in the hypothalamus and so they are known as neuroendocrine hormones. and after being synthesized in the supraoptic and paraventricular nuclei of the hypothalamus these hormones are transported to the posterior pituitary gland through the hypothalamo hypophysial tracts so after they are synthesized in these neuroendocrine cells of the hypothalamus and then when the hypothalamus is stimulated these hormones are secreted and they are transported to the posterior pituitary gland through the pituitary stalk and then they enter into the uh, capillaries and then into the blood so they are secreted into the blood by the process of exocytosis the supra optic nuclei of the hypothalamus primarily forms the anti diuretic hormone and oxytocin is also formed only 1/6 of the oxytocin is formed and the paraventricular nuclei of the hypothalamus primarily forms oxytocin and 1/6 of adh this point is very important so you have to remember that supra optic nuclei primarily synthesizes adh and paraventricular nuclei primarily synthesizes oxytocin and then after being uh, synthesized and when they come into the posterior pituitary gland they are secreted by the process of exocytosis and in the blood they are transported by loosely binding with a carrier protein and this carrier protein is known as neurophysin So what is the function of ADH anti diuretic hormone First let us know what is diuresis Diuresis means excretion of large volume of urine more than 3 liters per day Normal urine output of a person on, on an average in 24 hours is 600 ml to 2.5 liters. So when a person is excreting large volume of urine that is more than 3 liters this condition is known as diuresis. and the name of this hormone is anti diuretic hormone so you can understand by the name that it prevents diuresis so it conserves water in the body so let us see the function of adh increase reabsorption of water from the kidneys so very important function it is increases reabsorption of water from the kidneys so conserving water in the body and producing a very concentrated urine so when we are conserving the water in the body the output that is the urine that is going out of the body will have less water content so it will be a concentrated urine so remember that water is being reabsorbed and conserved in the body so the output that is the urine is concentrated and anti diuresis as the name suggest uh, means that it can cause decreased excretion of water by the kidneys so when you are asked the function of adh the it has mainly one function that is increase reabsorption of water from the kidneys so which results in conserving the water in the body and producing a very concentrated urine and this is called anti diuresis so if we can see this diagram we can see this is our kidney and this is the renal tubules the collecting tubules and collecting ducts and the distal convoluted tubule where water is mainly reabsorbed so when body is dehydrated 
that means decrease water content in the body there is increased adh secretion when increase adh secretion this will cause more reabsorption of water from the kidney so water will be reabsorbed from the kidneys and this will produce a constant the one that is going out the output from these renal tubules will be a concentrated urine so adh uh, and when body is hydrated that means when there is excess water in our body there will be less adh secretion and less water is reabsorbed so whenever body is dehydrated it stimulates the hypothalamus and adh is secreted from the posterior pituitary gland and this adh will cause increased reabsorption of water from the kidneys so without the adh uh, now let's see the mechanism of this antidiuretic hormone posterior pituitary hormones are protein hormones and protein hormones have their receptors on the cell membrane and protein hormones use the cyclic amp second messenger system for their mechanism of action so without adh the luminal membranes of the tubular epithelial cells of the collecting duct are almost impermeable to water so if adh is absent water in the distal convoluted tubule and collecting tubules these portions of the kidney are impermeable to water so when adh comes and uh, it acts on the uh, receptor on the cell membrane of these renal epithelial cells so it will cause the inside the cell membrane there is large number of special vesicles that have highly water permeable pores called aqua porins also you have to remember this term aqua porin so inside the cells there is the special vesicles and these special vesicles have highly water permeable pores called aqua porins but they are inside the cell when adh comes and acts on the cell it first combines with the membrane receptor that activate the adenyl cyclase and then cause formation of cyclic amp inside the tubular cells this causes phosphorylation this causes phosphorylation of the elements in the special vesicles which then causes the vesicle to insert into the apical cell membranes so first these special vesicles called uh, which contains the aqua porins are inside the cell and adh comes and binds with its receptor and causes the second messenger cyclic amp system to be activated and then it causes phosphorylation of these special vesicles so when these special vesicles are phosphorylated they go and insert into the apical cell membranes and then as they have aquaporins aquaporins are highly water permeable pores so when these special vesicles are inserted into the apical uh, membranes through the aquaporins water is reabsorbed and all this occurs within 5 to 10 minutes then in the absence of adh the entire process reverses in another 5 to 10 minutes so this process temporarily provides many new pores that allow free diffusion of water from the tubular fluid into the renal interstitial fluid through the tubular epithelial cells so the water is uh, reabsorbed by the process of osmosis and water is going from tubular fluid into the renal interstitial fluid through the tubular epithelial cells and through the aqua porins and regulation of antidiuretic hormone the antidiuretic hormone is regulated by two factors one is increase extracellular fluid osmolarity that stimulates the antidiuretic hormone secretion we know the osmolarity of our ecf is 300 milliosmoles per liter if this osmolarity is increased hey, so the uh, osmolarity is concentrated so the extracellular fluid osmolarity when increases that means it needs water so it stimulates the 
secretion of antidiuretic hormone and another factor that regulates the adh secretion is whenever there is low blood volume and that results in low blood pressure this also stimulates adh secretion because adh has vasoconstrictor effects that is why another name of adh is vasopressin another name of this antidiuretic hormone is vasopressin that means it presses the vessels so when presses the vessels means it causes vasoconstriction so whenever there when there is vasoconstriction the blood pressure will rise so we can see that there are two factors that regulates the adh secretion one is increased extracellular fluid osmolarity and another one is when there is low blood volume and low blood pressure so we can see the functional effects of vasopressin or adh so vasopressin or adh has two effects one is on the kidney on the kidney it increases the reabsorption of water okay so it increases the reabsorption of water so it decreases the osmotic pressure decreases diuresis and increases blood volume so this is the effect on kidney and it also has another effect on the smooth muscles of the blood vessels where it causes vasoconstriction and increases the blood pressure so you see it has only two effects but two very important effects now how this occurs eh, how it stimulates the hypothalamus near the hypothalamus are modified neuron receptors called osmoreceptors and when the extracellular fluid becomes too concentrated extracellular fluid in normal osmolarity is 300 milliosmoles per liter and when the extracellular fluid becomes too concentrated what it does is it pulls the water out of these osmoreceptors by osmosis and thus decreases the size of the osmoreceptors so when there is increase extracellular please note this is very important when there is increased extracellular fluid concentration then this causes pulling out of the water of the osmoreceptors and this decreases the size of the osmoreceptors and these osmoreceptors are situated near the hypothalamus and this stimulates the hypothalamus and hypothalamus secretes adh and conversely when there is increase mane uh, extracellular fluid volume becomes too dilute then what happens we need to take out the water of the out of our body so water moves by osmosis into the cell when there is excess water so when there is extracellular fluid becomes too dilute then water moves by osmosis into the cell note that both the process is osmosis hey water is moving by osmosis but when the extracellular fluid is concentrated water moves out of the osmoreceptors and when the extracellular fluid is dilute water moves into the osmoreceptors and this decreases the signal for adh secretion so in this way a feedback control system is available to control the total osmotic pressure of our body fluids so if you see this diagram this is what happens when the blood osmotic pressure increases it stimulates the osmoreceptors in the hypothalamus how it stimulates when the osmotic pressure is increased that means ecf is too concentrated it pulls out water of the osmoreceptors and this stimulates the osmoreceptors uh, in the hypothalamus and hypothalamus then causes secretion of adh from the posterior pituitary gland this adh goes and acts on the kidneys in the kidneys it increases water reabsorption so from the kidney there is increased water reabsorption into our body and when there is increased water reabsorption then the ecf osmolarity concentration will 
get back to normal and this will give negative feedback to the osmoreceptors and another thing is this when the osmoreceptors are stimulated in the hypothalamus there is also a behavioral response that is the thirst center is stimulated and so the person will increase drinking of water when thirst center is stimulated this will increase the drinking and when person is drinking more water this will reduce the blood osmotic pressure which will also give a negative feedback to the osmoreceptors in the hypothalamus so in this way the secretion of antidiuretic hormone is regulated now let us come to the next hormone of the posterior pituitary gland and that is oxytocin a very important hormone and oxytocin also affects on two sides one is the smooth muscle of the uterus and it causes contraction of the smooth muscle of the uterus and augments labor that means during the birth process of the baby oxytocin is very important because it causes contraction of the pregnant uterus and aids in the process of labor and oxytocin also acts on the smooth muscles of the breast that is the myoepithelial cells of the breast which causes contraction of these myoepithelial cells and helps in the ejection of milk that is in the lactation process of the baby and this is called the letdown reflex for lactation so oxytocin is also acting on two sides one is the uterus smooth muscle and another one is on the breast where it causes contraction of the myoepithelial cells so now let us look at the functions of oxytocin so oxytocin powerfully stimulates the contraction of the pregnant uterus especially towards the end of gestation and not uh, during the first stages of pregnancy you must remember that it only causes the contraction of the pregnant uterus during the labor process and the amount of oxytocin in the plasma increases during labor especially during the last stage and it also stimulates the cervix in a pregnant woman and elicits the nervous signals that pass to the hypothalamus and cause increased secretion of oxytocin and another function of oxytocin is it aids in milk ejection by contraction of the myoepithelial cells of the breast so if we look at this diagram we can see what happens is this is the baby in the uterus and it is the last stage of labor and the baby now needs to come out so when the head of the baby pushes against the cervix of the uterus there is stretching of the cervix of the uterus there are stretch receptors in these muscles so when the head of the baby is pushing it is causing stretching of the cervix and this stretching uh, of the cervix will this signal will go to the hypothalamus and uh, stimulate the hypothalamus to cause secretion of oxytocin and then oxytocin will come and cause the contraction of these uh, smooth muscle cells of the uterus so oxytocin is coming and it is contracting the uterus to help in the labor process so when the oxytocin is causing contraction of the uterus the baby is coming out more and more stretching of the cervix and this will cause release of more oxytocin and the baby pushes against the cervix causing it to stretch and this stretching of the cervix will send nerve impulses again to the brain and hypothalamus and that's that will cause release of more oxytocin so this is kind of a positive feedback mechanism and uh, after the baby is delivered so after the delivery process this uh, feedback cycle will stop so this is how oxytocin helps in the last stage of the labor so this is all for today uh, 
I hope that uh, you are noting down these functions and noting down the points of these hormones because these are very important. So we are seeing that posterior pituitary has only two hormones. One is the ADH and one is the oxytocin. And ADH is working on two sides. One is the kidneys and one is the smooth muscles of the blood vessel. And oxytocin is also has effect on two sides. One is the uterus it causes contraction of the pregnant uterus during the last stages of labor and another one is contraction of the myoepithelial cells of the breast so this is very uh, small functions very only two functions but these are very important so i hope you go through this lecture thoroughly and note down the points and we will take an exam uh, on next saturday for you on the uh, pituitary hormones, the hormones of the anterior pituitary gland and the hormones of the posterior pituitary gland. So this is all for today. Thank you and Allah Hafiz.